good afternoon uh, to all of you and uh, thanks for uh, hosting uh, this uh, discussion on this uh, very needed day of the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Um, in Canada, I think we are very lucky that we live in a country like Canada where people from all parts of the world can come and call home. I'm an immigrant myself. I came to Canada in 1999. And um, I was elected as a member of parliament to represent over 110,000 people in Ottawa. But uh, far too many people here in Canada and around the world continue to face discrimination, hate, and human rights violation just because of the color of their skin, the uh, background, or their faith, or their ethnicity. So today on this uh, International Day of Elimination and Racial Discrimination, we should all commit to end racism and racial discrimination in all its form. And we should reflect on the work which is still left to build a more fairer and more equitable country we have all called home. Uh, this past year, I think has been a challenging year for everyone. Um, one thing which is on everyone's mind is to fight this COVID-19, but thousands of Canadians across the country have done peaceful demonstrations, uh, demand to uh, end anti-Black racism, systemic uh, discrimination and white supremacy. So we have seen uh, what happened in USA with the uh, Black community, we have seen in uh, Canada, many peaceful demonstration, I think it's time that we all come together and make sure that we fight this racism, discrimination. Uh, the reality of COVID-19 has revealed many social health and economic disparities. Um, I have seen in the city of Toronto, the data shows that uh, majority of the people who have been hit, majority of the neighbor neighborhoods have been hit, are of the ethnic minorities. Maybe they don't have those high paying jobs that they have the luxury to work from home. They have been, their exposure is more. And try, in order to make their ends meet, they have been exposed and have been a target of COVID-19. Um, I am a member of the Standing Committee on the Status of Women. And we have seen that uh, pandemic has adversely affected uh, women but also minority women more specifically. In my own writing of Scarborough Center, we have a lot of um, intergenerational homes and a lot of uh, responsibility has fallen on the shoulders of the women because they are not even just like making sure that their kids are fed, they are taking care of their elderly parents. Uh, they are providing, they have been teachers for the kids and have not been able to return back to work. Um, in uh, the study, in one other study, I noticed that immigrant women, even after being here in Canada for, for uh, over 10 years, are not getting the jobs at the same level as other women would, women would get jobs. So there are lots of gaps, I think. And really, this day, we should commit that we will work. I'm very proud to be part of the government that, had, that has invested in anti-Black racism and is willing to work to make sure uh, the announcement, uh, the funding announcement for Black entrepreneurs, I think, was a very major step in making sure that we can fight anti-racism. So... I myself, uh, in my political life, uh, I have been a target of few uh, like um, uh, Islamophobic comments. Uh, when I started wearing hijab in 2012, uh, right-wing media attacked me on the social media saying that I'm taking my Islamic ideology or maybe I am uh, wearing a hijab for political purposes. So I just want to assure all the young girls and the uh, women who want to wear a hijab that I will always stand up for them. I think it is women's right to wear what they want to. So if a young girl wants to wear a hijab, I think she should not be questioned or she doesn't have to answer that why she is wearing that. Uh, I'm very proud to represent a very diverse community here in Scarborough uh, Center. People from all parts of the world have called that home and uh, 
when I see in the community, when I go to different events and see uh, what I find uh, that in common is that all everyone wants to build a better future for their next generations, regardless of their background. So I think the most important thing Thing we should commit today is to learn about each other, to learn about our friends, learn about our neighbors, learn about our community members, and that's how we can end racism. Uh, I, in my own writing, I have formed a Scarborough Center Multi-Faith Council, and I think that has been an amazing platform to bring uh, religious uh, leaders, organizations on one platform, and we host a lot of events to learn about each other. We host uh, iftar at a church, we host a Thanksgiving dinner at a mosque. We have done um, multi-faith walks where we have walked uh, to a church, to a mosque, to a temple. So this is a process which I started to make sure that we learn about each other. So I hope all of us uh, today can commit to make sure that we will find, we will, uh, fight all forms of racism and discrimination and try to build a more diverse and a more inclusive Canada where everyone can be part of the prosperity. So thanks uh, for engaging everyone in this discussion and uh, for arranging this platform to talk about what we can do to end racism.